Good morning, everyone. Happy Friday, and welcome to You Have Beauty Care Choices. I'm Jennifer Coy, the CEO of Beauty Care Choices, and today I have an industry veteran with us. He has been in the industry for a very long time. He is the president and co-founder of Ultimate Salon Professionals. He's created numerous uh, professional brands, including Enjoy, which is one of um, our brands here at Beauty Care Choices that we really are interested in finding out a little bit more from him on why he has a passion of creating products. He's also the host of a new show, uh, the Hairdresser Power Challenge on television. So we're gonna give you a little trailer on that, something to look forward to. Um, really cool that he's highlighting the hairdressers in our, our industry. And then we're gonna talk a little bit about the state in California um, of our salons still being closed and, and kind of how that's affecting um, us in the salon industry. So please welcome to the show, Patrick Dockery, the president of Ultimate Salon Professionals. Hi, Patrick. Hi, Jennifer, thanks for having me on. I really appreciate it. I like what you're doing here. Oh, well, we appreciate you being here. Our, uh, my whole point in doing this is to learn something. I learned something from you innovators in our industry on every single show. Um, you are a brand creator. What got you into creating and actually manufacturing your own products, right? You even have your own lab. Yeah, we make everything here. Um, the key is, is that I want to be able to create the highest quality product with the highest quality ingredient. And really, unless you make that kind of a commitment by having your own lab and making it yourself, there's just too many variables you can't control. So that's why we have our own lab. And I have a background in manufacturing. In fact, that's how I got in the industry initially. So was Enjoy your first brand? No, actually, um, the first brand and the way I got into the industry was a company called Creative Nail Design, mm -hmm. Solar Nails. Yeah, and uh, that was back in 1978, so a little while ago. <laughs> and uh, I was uh, lucky enough to be friends with uh, Tom Nordstrom and also his sister Carol Nordstrom. Their, their dad, Dr. Nordstrom, who was a dentist, actually developed the Creative Nail Design products, and he brought me in as their very first employee to help them with the manufacturing. I didn't know anything about the industry, hair, you name it. I was I did some construction work with my brother, and they knew I was a good worker, they liked me, we had a great friendship, and that's how I got in the beauty industry, believe it or not. I love this. I'm talking to my kids. I have two kids going off to college right now, and I talk about them as just how life's experiences kind of oh. dictate. You know, I think at 18, you feel like you have to have your life planned out, but yeah. sometimes it's the opportunities that you roll with. So you're at C&D, you learn about all this manufacturing, and then you said you kind of the chemicals and you had some health challenges, which led you yeah. to enjoy? No, no, not quite yet. Um, it was a quite a long journey. Um, it's been almost uh, 40, getting near 45 years now. So. No, you can't was, be that old. Yeah, the little bags in the air. <laughs> you're looking good. Um, um, you know, the thing is, is that uh, the chemicals that we were working with back then, and still do, we just didn't have the right protection, really, that they do now, the standards. And sometimes it would get on my skin, or I, you know, and breathe the fumes, or things of that nature. Because, you know, when you're making nail polishes, and polymer resins, and, you know, using a lot of solvents, things of that nature, what happens is that you can build up sensitivities, just like when you're being a hairdresser exposed to chemicals. And that was kind of one of the things that was always in my head. And I said, if I ever have the opportunity to make my own brand, I'm gonna be very conscious of how it affects us, the people that use it and the people that it's used on. Yes. So I wanted to make the highest quality products that were you know, safe. And that uh, we, for example, we've been working on a um, straightening type product, like a, a blowout type product for over, I would say about 10 years now. Um, the problem is, is just about every one of those products out there, when you actually heat them, the outgas is creating formaldehyde or other toxic ingredients, even if there's no formaldehyde necessary in it. So we're still working on things like that, but we just haven't achieved it yet. And until we achieve that level, because of my initial experience in the beauty industry of being allergic to things, I will never compromise. So very important. I relate to you so much. I, I actually have come down this clean line um, or clean passion myself um, through my own health journey and um, being a hairdresser myself for quite a number of years. And um, 
the sensitivity from the chemicals. I'm one of those hairdressers that I needed to touch and feel and didn't always wear my gloves all the time and it probably ended up taking a bigger toll on me because I really wanted, I'm that artistic hair throwing kind of hairdresser and uh, you know, it does, it, it's the chemicals. I don't think people realize sometimes the, the chemicals when you're on it, if you're in the chair, it's once every six weeks you're around it, but when you're a hairdresser, it's every day. And we needed to have this kind of revolution in our industry of new ingredients, better ingredients. Um, before we get started, I'm going to say hi, Allison. Hi, Jennifer, David, Joe, Brad. We've got some great people joining us today. Please throw us some questions. Good morning, Beauty Care Choices. Thank you, Angelica. Rocking it again, she says. Thanks, you guys, for joining us. Patrick and I appreciate you being here. So Absolutely. you ended up by through your journey creating or coming up with a passion to manufacture brands with good ingredients and i know you've manufactured yeah. a few different brands um enjoy happens to be just one that we wanted to really focus on today um it's a popular sure. brand here at beauty care choices we've kept, um sold it for a while but there's a segment of enjoy called holistic that's become like your baby. So we're gonna get to that too, because that's a new launch, fairly new launch, and uh, we really wanted to tell some people about it. Plus the packaging is amazing. I wanna talk to you about that as well. But what are the kind of stance that you take with um, your products? I know the clean salon aspects of en uh, Enjoy, um, it's gluten-free. I know you're um, gluten intolerant and you go gluten-free. Um, no artificial colors, no parabens, no sulfates, no soy. Um, that was kind of where Enjoy took off, but what are the passions that you really stand behind that you're not going to do? Well, you know, in my tenure in this industry, I have worked for many, many manufacturers because I am a hairdresser. I've owned many salons and I've uh, done education for many large companies. And one of the things that was a problem for me is uh, ethically. Um, I, I like to be honest. Um, I like to tell the truth. In fact, some people say I'm really blunt. And that's not for everybody. That's okay, I get it. But uh, they were telling a story. A lot of these companies tell a story. I'm mm -hmm. sure you, you know that. Absolutely. And not really based on fact, not really based on chemistry, not really based on science, or not really based on anything uh, resembling the truth. It's more about a marketing story. Mm -hmm. And so for me, that was my real motivation or the catalyst for me to make my own brand so that I could eliminate myself from those industry standards of the story. You know, we talked about yesterday rainbow, uh, rainbows and unicorn milk and all these other things that don't really exist, but they sound good on a marketing story. Yeah, the top, so, the top ingredient in, in uh, hair products is unicorn milk, if you guys didn't know. Yeah, pretty much. I, it's <laughs> it's yeah, trending. Really Look at that. <laughs> Basically, you guys, your hair is made of protein, so there's got to be some low molecular weight protein to help reconstruct the hair. I mean, there's things that you put on the hair that can block the cuticle. We have to consider the pH is number one. There's so many simple things that need to be considered in making a great product and making a tool to make hairdressers more creative and better, and then taking care of your clients. Number one reason that a client will not come back to a hairdresser is that their color fades. Mm -hmm. Most hairdressers and most clients don't know the number one reason your color fades, and that's your shampoo, and that's the pH of the shampoo. The cuticle opens, the color falls out, and there you go, and you just wasted you know, 50, 100, 200, $400, and that's a crime. That's now, not right. Do you so, believe it is the sulfates in the shampoo or other no. ingredients as well that fade color? No, it's not the sulfates. No, it's not the sulfates. I mean, so I, be I believe that sulfate free is better. But I also believe that sulfur free is even better if you can get sulfur free. Okay. There's only one brand that I know that's sulfur free out there right now and it's, you know, as you know, it's this brand right here, which we're gonna talk Our about holistic. a bit. Holistic. Yeah, holistic, yeah, it was a challenge. <laughs> it's silicone free and it's gluten free and it's soy free and you name it. But it's not so easy to get the performance. Um, when we use these normal ingredients that everybody else uses, transitioning to something different and making it that much different. I think we're at least 10 years ahead of the industry with holistics um, because I was motivated to do so. Because I've had myself health challenges with, you know, obviously gluten. And then recently I had mold in my house uh, about three, four years ago. Mm -hmm. And that's what actually drove me to create holistics, these products here. Because I wanted to have a product that would muscle test well. Mm 
Mm -hmm. And I talked to you yesterday about, about standard process muscle testing. And I'll kind I told of say, you I you know, didn't know what it was, so I had to look it yeah. up. But I still don't I'll know enough about it to explain it. So you tell us. If you don't, yeah, if you don't mind, I could. This is not super accurate, but it's an example of how it works. And if you want to learn more, look up muscle testing, standard process muscle testing. And just because it's good for one person, a product, doesn't mean it's good for another. Like, for example, if the product contains gluten, for me, I'm sensitive to gluten, and I don't test well with that. Okay. You know, avocado oil, I don't test well with avocado oil. I don't test well with certain uh, essential oils, and yet some I do. So when you look at it from a holistic standpoint, you look at what's good for your body. Holistic means overall health, okay? It's a whole picture. It's not about one thing. It's not about essential oils. It's not about, uh, you know, fragrances. It's not about all. It's the overall thing. And then how does your body like it? And I'll show you how it's done. I would take a bottle, for example, and this is the one that I use now. And I use it as my body wash. Excuse me. I use it as my body wash. This is Volume Shampoo by Enjoy Holistics. And I use it as my body wash because, remember, your skin is the largest organ on your body. Absorbs every, it all. Whatever goes over your head is still rinsing so, off over all your body. Absolutely. So when you're using these body washes and these bath bombs and bath soaps that are high pH, which most of them are because then you'll get more foam, what you're doing to your body's natural defense mechanism, such as your acid mantle balance, which is the sebaceous secretions that we create that protect our skin from bacteria. It keeps us moist. It's the foundation of great hair and great skin. And that pH is around 4.5 to 5.5. Right. Very important. All these products are balanced to the human body. And the funny thing about water, guys, water is called the universal solvent. And it assumes the pH of whatever it comes in contact with. So when people tell you about water, well, they're semi-misinformed. You know, there's a lot of misinformation out there. So you need your shampoo and your body wash to be the right pH because then it will work holistically with your body's system. Okay? So here's how you muscle test. Okay. You take the product, you put it on your chest. Now, first thing I do, though, is I check for my polarity. So this is my nail towards me. This is my finger towards me. And what will happen is I'll have someone push on my arm. So I'll, let's imagine that someone's pushing on my arm, okay? And then when my polarity is achieved, my arm will go weak, okay? So then I know that I'm good to test. This is if fascinating. I would do this, if I would do this and my arm stays strong and did this and my arm stays strong, well, then I'd probably need to adjust my neck or put it, some energy into my neck because the messages from your brain go through your spinal column to the various portions of your body and your organs, okay? So that's how that works, okay? So what I was confused about yesterday, I had heard of muscle testing in a sense of through a holistic doctor and it's a very individualized right. approach. How do you right. muscle test for mass people to use a product? Like if it's, if it you only wouldn't. relaxes on you that way, how do you know that you've created a product for more people for the most, do you do like mass muscle testing? Is that kind of what it is? What I do is I have a group of very sensitive people okay. that I work with that usually nothing tests well in them. They're very sensitive, including myself. I'm very sensitive. The thing is when you have a really clean diet and you live a really clean life, like I don't drink, I don't smoke, I don't do drugs I never have. I eat like very clean. I've never I'm done drugs or drink or anything. That's, I mean, no, that's such a testament no. to the lifestyle you live. That's amazing. You know, and I don't really go to the regular doctor. I, if I break my arm or if I need stitches or something like that, I'll go. Right. Um, but generally, I try to use my body and herbs and vitamins and exercise in order to, uh, you know, because I'm going to be, I'm, I'm 58 now, I'll be 68, or I'll be 60, you know, in the next year and a half. So um, I'm super active. I have a, I have a six-year-old. Um, I do stuff every day. I have tons of energy. I don't have to take any medications at all. So... It's just kind of like my lifestyle. So I want my products to reflect what I care about. And you know what? There's a percentage of the population that actually cares about that. And it's growing, Absolutely. by the way. And that's yeah, kind of the audience we have. But I will be a testament for Enjoy. And I deal with, you know, I have 200 different brands here. And I've been doing this for over 15 years. I've sold a lot of different products. You really do walk the walk because you really protect your brand as well. As far as distribution, manufacturing, you cover it from beginning to end. And you're... 
your reps, um, we have them in our salon monthly and they really stay on top of things. So I feel like you really do walk the walk, Patrick, in um, how you create your brands and then also monitoring your brands throughout the industry. Absolutely. Well, you know, at one point we had distributors worldwide and um, those distributors decided that they wanted to sell our products in Target and Walgreens and, you know, all these other brands, all these other outlets that weren't good for this industry. Right. So I literally caught them all and cut them off and we're only 100% direct. So yeah, we're very concerned about our brand and that it's only sold in salons by professionals. So uh, yeah. So most let's get into don't... just some quick, cause we do have people very interested in enjoy products. So okay. let's just talk about um, our top seller right now is the uh, luxury brand. So you have okay. your, your luxury and then we have the hydrate and then we yep. have, um, the volume line and then your stylers. So we'll just go quickly through um, the different products. Why does a person choose luxury over highlighter or over hydrate or volume? Okay, so here's the good thing about my career. When I was doing hair, I did hair for many, many, many years and on many salons. But the good thing is I did all types of hair. I did Asian hair, I did black hair, I did you know, Middle Eastern hair. I had Where my are you clients. located, Patrick? Where are you physically? I was all over, mainly in California, but okay. um, I was in Los Angeles, and also I live in Oceanside, California. Okay. And in Oceanside, California, where I started out, Oceanside, Carlsbad, San Diego area. Good. In Oceanside, we had a high population of what are called Samoan people. A very diverse community, yes. Pacific Islanders. And that kind of hair is probably the most challenging hair texture to work on. Hmm. So I always wanted to have a product that would work for that type of hair, mm -hmm. that would have no excuses. And that's what luxury is. Luxury is for the person that has the most unruly, coarse, moisture depleted hair that needs love and needs moisture and needs conditioning, okay? It's not There's necessarily- Typical people think you need to use heat and tools for that, which there is, if you have good products, as you're saying, a way to maintain that unruly hair. Yes. Like there's no such thing as a sunblock in hair care, unless it has an SPF, just so you know, guys, I'm sorry. I know people say that they have sunblocks. They say they have UVA and UVA, UVB inhibitors. Okay, that is in the product to make sure that the colorant in the product does not fade. The color of the product doesn't fade. That's why you put UVA and UVB in it. It's not to protect the hair, sorry. The only thing that we can do to protect the hair is put moisture in it. So when you take that super hot flat iron or that super hot curling iron or tool that you're using, and you apply it to that hair in order to, you know, calm it down and to make it really, you know, break down some of the, the hydrogen bonds in the hair to reform them. We want to protect that hair, and we also want to be able to reconstruct the hair into the cortex, not only just moisturize the cuticle. And that's where our products are so different. Our molecular weights are right in line with the reality of hair repair. Any to drive it deeper into the cuticle, yes, right? Let me, let me explain that to you. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Yes. The thing is, is that when you have any molecular weight higher than 500, 500 MW, okay, that protein cannot go past that cuticle layer and it cannot penetrate into the cortex where the bonds of your hair are found. And that's where repair takes place. Repair does not necessarily take place on the cuticle. And these bond builders, quote unquote bond builders today, Remember, they're polymer resins that coat the outside of the hair shaft to give it integrity. But when you do that, the cuticle loses its, its semi-permeable characteristics, meaning we still want things to go into the cuticle. We don't want to completely coat it because then how do we repair it? How do we right. color it? How do we right. bleach it? How do we style it when it has a coating on it? So you understand. And yeah, I hope no you're... silicones, nothing to really seal that cuticle because the whole process of hairdressing is opening and closing the cuticle for adding color, removing color, and smoothing and all of that. So you want that cuticle to remain flexible yes. and live, as you will. Yes. Now, here's the so thing, if we though. go from luxury to hydrate, so luxury sure. for your thick, coarse, unruly Islander hair, um, and then hydrate, where would you switch yeah. to hydrate and say, I don't really quite need luxury? Well, that's somebody that needs moisture but still wants volume and movability and shine and body. And that's what's so unique about our hydrating system. There is not one hydrating system that gives you all those characteristics where you can literally hydrate your hair, give it the moisture it needs, but still have a softness. I want to mention something because I'm very I'm much a stickler on things. Okay. You said no silicone. Now, Holistic has no silicone, but 
these products here, the regular Joy products, have water soluble silicone, and there's okay. a big difference. The silicone that people are generally concerned about are the I'm non. I'm here to learn. Tell me, Patrick. Tell me. Okay, good. <laughs> non water soluble silicones are okay. your issues, yeah. and what they do is they literally build up on the hair shaft, causing all the problems you had mentioned. But the water soluble, which are more expensive, and you need to know how to work with them, don't create that buildup. So I just wanted to clarify that because I, I want to make that. sure that I'm, I'm listening to everything you're saying and I don't want to give people the misinformation. Yeah, for sure. And I have them on my notes here as no silicones, but you're right. It was under the holistic, which we haven't quite got to yet. We just no barely silicone. touched on it, but we're getting there. Right. But still, in the same sense, water soluble is better than some of the other um, types of silicone in the product. Insoluble. So I'm glad you clarified that because that still does make Enjoy somewhat of a very different type product, which is you won't have any today. silicone buildup from any of the products who use water, any products, including Enjoy, to use water soluble silicone. But I do understand that there are people that have a issue with silicone or even the name silicone, mm -hmm. which there's so many different types. Like if you look at your hair oils, they have what's called cyclomescopene in them, and that's a form of silicone. But there's no issues with that. You know, all your oils that you use, you know, like your hair oils and whatnot, that makes them, you know, dry faster. It makes them have more slip. If you would just put simply an oil in your hair and expect those characteristics, you know, putting straight oil in your hair, that's a protective mechanism, but it's not going to give you that, that shine, that slip, that smoothness. It's going to feel a little rough. But the thing about the cyclomescaphene that we add in the, it's a new type of silicone, obviously, that we add in a lot of these products. They enable us to have this beautiful hair that doesn't have buildup. So just, you know, it's knowledge. It's, it's just, yeah. it's just knowledge. And that's, that's why all I do this show. That is the whole reason why I wanted to partner with brand creators and educators because one, I haven't had um, a lot of, I'm just now kind of learning all of these ingredients and stuff, but yeah. I know through my own health journey, I need to learn them. And I want to know, <laughs> I want to know what's on the back of my shampoo. I want to know what I'm putting in my hair, what I'm putting on my kid's hair and all of that good stuff. So this is great information. Thank you. Well, can um, I go, you know, you, you didn't let me finish the thing on muscle testing. I'll show you. Okay, so we then. find the polarity okay. um, and then take the product and then we put our arm out and then we push down. And if we go weak, it's real simple. If you go weak once you're polar, then that product's not good for you. But then you see you do a secondary test with a hand mode like this, okay, with you touch your nails together like this, and then you put your hand out, and then if it goes weak, then your body really likes it, okay? And we do that on all our products. There's also preferred hand modes. There's other hand modes that you use. But that's a good basic hand mode to do a muscle test. If you're like in the store and you want to find out if something's good for you, make sure you're polar. You're, you're, you know, one goes weak at one point, then you basically take whatever product is, have your buddy go, hey, push my hand down with your hand out straight like this. And then if it goes weak, that's not good for you. But it's then interesting. The everybody in the room is going like this and like this and like this as well, you're doing this. Yeah, that's first just to make sure you're polar. And then you put the product here and then you test. And if you go weak, that's probably not good. But what you want to do secondarily is take these two fingers, put your nails together, and then test. And then if you go weak, then that means it's recommended for you. It's a very good product for you. So okay, like wait, we'll, we'll, we'll touch a little bit more on that because I have some more questions. I just want to get through the Enjoy line, and we'll touch on that yeah. with the um, Holistics line. So from yeah. the Moisture um, Hydrate line, um, that is people that still want a little bit more volume fullness in their hair. And then to the volume line in Enjoy, that yes. what, is, what is the perfects of the volume line? The purpose of the volume line is, number one, if you look at our stimulating product, the stimulator is a replacement for DHT blockers. So it has like, for example, you know, Hapanica Suerta in it, which is in Asian countries. That's what they use for hair loss, okay? It's a, it's a plant that grows on rocky slopes and that extract actually has been shown, I mean, it's not FDA approved, obviously, to regrow hair in Asian countries. The other thing is we have avocado seed extract. That topically will eliminate and neutralize DHT, which causes your follicles to basically atrophy. And then of course we have uh, polysaccharides in there, which polysaccharides bond nutrients into liquid, including your blood, and actually deliver the nutrients for a healthy hair. And that's a topical solution. Instead of using your Rogaine's, your Propecia's, which do have side effects, as right. you know, being prescription right. drugs, this has no side effects. And for many people, it's amazing. And then we use essential oils. I talked to you about essential oils where I, you know, it can be good, it can be bad. 
And okay, so let's it, explain the difference. I loved this analysis yesterday of essential oils versus hypoallergenic fragrances. What is that difference? Okay, well, essential oils are oils that we use. There's many oils. I mean, we'll, we'll use a good example of, for example, lavender oil. Okay? okay, that's a very popular one. Okay, I probably wouldn't recommend lavender oil to a pregnant or lactating woman. And you can look it up. It's not recommended for that. Because at that point, it's something that can affect their milk and can affect them hormonally, okay? Because essential oils are very powerful. But in the right case, it can be so beneficial. So essential oils does not mean that it's hypoallergenic. In fact, essential oils are highly allergenic. In fact, up to 75% of people may have reactions to essential oils, which well, they're essential great. Essential oils are based off of foods, herbs, and things like that, which are kind of what our body does have right. you know, sensitivities to depending on who you are. So that does make sense. Yeah, well, remember, plants have a way to protect themselves. Right. Like, for example, tomatoes and eggplants and potatoes, they all produce, and many others, they produce what's called lectins. Right. And those lectins create inflammation in our body. So plants, they do chemical warfare to stay alive. So we have to be careful when we use plants that, once again, we can muscle test to find out if that plant is good for us. And, you know, we can basically be sure that what we're using is beneficial and that it's safe. So um, before we go on, volume, who is the best client for volume? Well, you know, this is also for people that are experiencing fine and thinning hair, okay. so that are losing their hair. So that's a great person. The other person is a person who has really fine, frail, damaged, weak, limp hair. Because in the conditioner, the therapeutic conditioner, we actually have a polymer resin system that actually creates almost like the spider web effect on the outside of the cuticle to give it strength and volume and body. Even though your hair doesn't have it, we're creating a false body in your hair, which makes it look beautiful, gives it fantastic shine. But it's based on the highly advanced chemistry, which is boring. But hey, the bottom line is it works and it's good for you. And that's we're kind what of we're... nerds here, but you're right. Um, it, yeah. It's not for everyone. Not for everyone. <laughs> but hey, you know, if you guys want to get into it, you can. We're always available to do that. You know, in in salon, we love to train. Uh, you know, hairdressers. Most people just say, "Well, what does it smell like? How does it work?" And then they want results. That, I get that. Um, but to make a product, you kind of got to know all the components that go in it, how they work, and then you have to make them work synergistically. It's kind of like making a chocolate chip cookie, right? I, I, do you ever bake? Have you ever baked a cookie in your life? I, I've made many cookies. I'm not great at it, but I have made many right. cookies. So I could tell you, here's the ingredients, right? Uh -huh. Don't tell you how much, the temperature to cook it at, how to mix them, and you might come up with nothing like a chocolate chip cookie. It might be a block. It might Chocolate be solid. Chocolate biscuit might... sometimes. Yeah, it could be a biscuit. It could be all melted. It could be, you right. know, that it didn't rise. So that's the thing about products. When you make great products, it's not as easy as just throwing things in a vat. It's how right. fast do you spin it? What temperature do you cook it at? Um, when do you cool it? Do you chill it? Do you use a, you know, like a stator? Do you, what kind of homogenizations do you do? What kind of uh, hertz do you spin it at? I mean, there's so much to it, which, I mean, I'm the nerd for that. But that's what I love doing. Because I wish I, I was that nerd. I wish I was that nerdy. I yeah, want to know all of that chance, information. Yeah, if you ever get a chance, come on down. I'll show you how to make products. My son goes to UCSD, so I'm kind of uh, in oh. that area as well. I'm an Oceanside. Yeah, daughter's going down to, to Cal State Northridge. So I'm going to be down there quite a bit again. And I'm a pilot, so I could just fly myself on down. Come on down. down. There's, so. a, there's, there's Oceanside uh, Airport. You can fly right in your small plane. Right on. Or, or also Carlsbad. Yes, I love Carlsbad. Been in there many times. Well, you're only uh, 10 miles from there. You can come see me. I want to. I definitely want to. So and let's customer... jump to what we've been kind of teasing the whole entire... I'm so excited about Holistic. Yeah. Holistic yeah. is your new baby. Tell us all yeah. about the, the why we created this ultra superior shampoo. And the packaging is just gorgeous. It looks like a beach. Yeah, and it's, have you? what do you think about the fragrances? Fragrances are so yummy, so, so they yummy. Are, they right? feel like I'm on a tropical vacation. I know, and the good thing about those fragrances, guess what? They're hypoallergenic. We developed our own fragrances specifically. So there are not there are no essential oils. There are no natural ingredients. These are all hypoallergenic fragrances that don't are non-reactive to people that are sensitive. But yeah, you get the feeling, you get the, you know, the sensation, and you get the beautiful experience. 
but with none of the toxicity and none of the reactivity. And that was the first thing, you know. And that took us three years to develop these fragrances, by the way. So they're a big deal. The other thing is we don't put colorant in our product. So there's no colorants in there. There's no soy. No because soy. soy and wheat, for example, wheat is obviously your gluten, and that can be, that's pretty prevalent now. People understand that, right? But soy is also an issue because soy can affect your hormonal balance, okay? Right. Because especially estrogen wise, testosterone. Yeah. yeah, so we don't want to have that on our body. Our skin, like you said, what did you tell me earlier? Your the shampoo is absorbing all that to your body. You're right. right. Thank you for sharing that with your customers because you're absolutely right. Um, people don't realize that. I mean, yeah. what you put on your body is just about as important as what you put in your mouth. Absolutely. So that's why we don't have soy. We also don't have sulfur. That's not really a trend right now, but in my opinion, I think it's much better to have surfactants, which are the cleansing bases that are sulfate free and also sulfur, uh, sulfate and sulfur free. Okay. Yeah. I haven't other... heard sulfur free yet. It really is. Yeah. You are, you are kind of bringing that to my attention. We're uh, as far as I know, we're the only brand that has developed a sulfur and sulfate free cleansing base. In this so, holistic brand and silicone yeah. free, right? And then I was going to say it's also silicone free. It's also propylene glycol free and it's also paraben free. So it's really what's not in it that makes it so amazing. But the problem is when you don't use those type of standard ingredients that our industry is based on, the performance is usually horrible. Like you go to like a Whole Foods or you go to, you know, a natural food store and you, you say, oh gosh, this is so pure and so amazing. You put on your hair and your skin and you're like, oh my gosh, my hair feels like straw. My color just basically, everything came out and my skin is dry. So you're, you're creating problems because it's not about the natural ingredients. It's how they work synergistically with your body in a holistic state. And that's why this took us so long to develop these products. My wish list was I want to be free of these, but with the performance. And like I say, you used it and you know the difference. It is amazing. And we have the hydrate and we have the volume. So if you need moisture, you have the hydrate, um, which has the coconut on it. Or if you need volume, then you have the... Um, volume that has the avocado on it and bamboo, okay, now, right? Okay, listen. Yeah, now I wanted to tell you something. There is no avocado or coconut in these products. So, a lot of the things have coconut, but that's the picture that you see of the bottle. That denotes the fragrance, not okay. the ingredient. So that is, know? the fragrance is called avocado bamboo. And then the hydrate, it's called um, Day at the Beach, which is uh, sugar cane fragrance coconut and then um basically like a beach fragrance that they've created yeah and then of course we have this one that's passion flower which is insane but go ahead that's those are awesome and the masks then the, we have the detangling spray which is great obviously if you don't want a yes. conditioner you could probably use yes. the volume shampoo and a detangling spray yeah. um and then the mask if you wanted the hydrate but the hydrate conditioner wasn't quite enough we could add sure. in the hydrate shampoo and the hydrate mask you and sure can. And, and once again, I want to mention that those those are the fragrances, not the ingredients. So right. if someone says, oh, I'm allergic to lavender oil, there's no lavender oil in there. So what, I do I have a friend that's allergic to coconut. Could they use these? Right. Well, you have to look at the ingredients and each one will be listed. If there is a coconut extract in there, it will be listed. Okay. So it's every product has the ingredient deck and it's very accurate. And in fact, Unlike most companies, we actually list our ingredients in the order that we use them, like the highest quantity, the lowest quantity. Because sometimes people scam you and you think all these great ingredients are in there, but if it's like 2% or less, it doesn't matter where you put it and they put those in the wrong place. Water's usually first, you understand, legally. Right. But then after that, They'll you put can fragrance put at the very end and it happens to be the third one, yeah. Probably, yeah, I get could be, yeah. <laughs> and the big thing about ours too, we add all our, our fragrances and all our uh, botanicals once we've chilled the product a lot of people the products in a warm state they add the fragrance and they add the botanicals and guess what happens they flash off they get destroyed so we actually unlike most manufacturers have chillers so we actually chill our products during our manufacturing process in order to make them more stable in order to make sure that they have full efficacy and our ph is guaranteed for the life of the product and that's everything for your skin and your hair ph is everything guys yeah yeah, for the performance, for sure. 
Okay, so these are Patrick's new baby, Holistic. If you want to try, they are available here at Beauty Care Choices. Um, and we have um, our customer service agents all have looked into it. So feel free to call on those. Um, I want to talk about your other new baby that you've been working on, the Hairdresser Power, Power Challenge television show. Um, tell yeah. us about that. What, and where can people find out more about it? Well, I'll tell you what. It's on every other Saturday on CNBC. And it's at 11 o'clock on Saturday. Um, and then, of course, you know, so it'll be at, uh, what is it, 8 o'clock in Hawaii. And then it's going to be uh, 2 o'clock. So, you know, yeah. it's basically the time zones. And it's a half hour show and it's a competition. Three contestants, two judges. They compete for cash and prizes. They come in, they do real hair, they do real makeovers, they bring their own models. And it's awesome. I watched what a few episodes. What? So exciting. Yeah. Yeah, it's so exciting, it's so creative, and it showcases what we really do. It's not about embarrassing hairdressers and making them look stupid. It's about transformations, and that's what we do as hairdressers. We transform. how badass our skills are. That's yes. what it was. It was crazy. You brought a trailer. Let's take a, just a moment and let the audience look at the trailer of this, and then we'll talk more about it. Oh, thanks. Great. Yeah. yeah. Hello and welcome to the Hairdresser Power Challenge. We have some of the most creative hairdressers from across the nation. I love to color and a good cut goes with a good color. Today the look that we have planned is we're taking goth to the next level. Celebrity judges will score them on cut, color, and overall transformation. But none of you really went for it to cut something short. You should have cut her hair off. Be sure to join us as we find out who will be the next Hairdresser Power Challenge champion. So Patrick, that is amazing. We're not just talking even standard, just regular hairdressing, although a lot of them are typical makeovers. The one I saw, the woman was re, uh, making over her mother, um, and yes. it was more of a, a traditional, what you would see on an everyday look, but you also have some avant-garde looks as well. Yeah. Well, it's up to the hairdresser's creativity. They choose their model, they come in and they have two and a half hours to do a transformation. Some of those that you saw there were very ambitious. And a couple of times, we've had people run out of time. They have to put their combs down, hair is wet, how do you judge it? Okay. And they may have lost the show because of that. Timing is important too for hairdressers. Then you have uh, an hour to basically do the makeup and fix anything that was wrong in the first judging. And then we give them a 10 minute photo shoot. And then we're judged between the before and after. So we're judged with the cut and color and the before and after. And it is really stressful, but it really changes people's lives. We also have the post interviews, if, you get, if anybody wants to watch them, on hdpchallenge.com. Um, and we talk about their experience as, you know, how it was and what they would do different and how it pushed them as a hairdresser. And I'm all about empowering hairdressers because I believe that hairdressers are very essential and that we change people's lives. And we need to get more respect and we need to be shown in the light of who we really are. We are the creative genius behind album covers and television shows and art and fashion and rock stars and all of that. Without us, there wouldn't have been a Ziggy Stardust. Mm -hmm. there, there wouldn't have been a Kennedy versus Nixon debate where Kennedy won because he had makeup and hair done. You I mean, wouldn't we're... know about the mullet. You wouldn't know about the Rachel. You wouldn't know about yeah. the the flat top or the, the everything oh. else. It, it is. We're, it's a, it's a part of our society. It's part of our culture. culture. It's our culture. It's our identity. It's who we are. It's who we feel that you we are. You know what I love that you told me yesterday, Patrick, when you said, um, sometimes the hairdresser is the only person that listens to people. Sometimes yeah. we're the only one that touches people. So, yeah. I mean, people can live a very sedentary life, especially right now when we're in quarantine. But even before that, um, you know, you see those jokes out there, quarantine didn't really affect my lifestyle. We had really kind of gotten into kind of a, a separatist lifestyle. And I think a lot of us are recognizing, wow, just even that little interaction keeps my mind so strong. Um, and going to the hairdresser and just being able to sit there and have somebody that's right, really at your mercy that has to just listen to your problems. But we're good at that. That's what we do. We want to know your problems, right? Well, we're not trained to do it, but you know, the only reason that people that are in this industry for a long time stay in the industry is because they are naturally good at it. You're right. We're not trained therapists, but what happens is there's a lot of talented people that have been in this industry that didn't make it because they didn't like people. 
Mm. And the thing about us is we're creative, but we love people. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we're licensed to touch people from here up. You know that. And I'll tell you, the energy transfer of touching someone's head or touching their shoulders and listening to them and looking them in the eye and spending your total focused effort on that individual is life changing. And especially, as you said, with what we're going through with this separatist, you know, separatism that we're doing through the coronavirus, the isolation. I mean, I know for me personally, I mean, I'm a very social person mm -hmm. and this is hard on me. As a matter of fact, I've been doing a documentary going out throughout California and interviewing stylists and finding out how they're feeling, how their clients are feeling, you know, that we're, we are essential in society. If you can go to Walmart and you can go to Home Depot and you can do all these things where they don't have sanitization standards, they really don't. You just wear a mask, that's it. The sanitization standards that we have and that we learn in beauty school throughout this country as cosmetologists far exceeds even sometimes the standards in a doctor's office. So, you know, it doesn't really make sense. I understand there's a lot of politics involved. I don't get into that. But I just really, 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 really care about hairdressers more than anything. That's why I'm doing this job now. I can retire at any time now. I'm financially great. The reason I stay here is because I want to make the best products possible for individuals and hairdressers, healthy products, because we're going to be doing this till we're 80 or 90, right? Probably. Probably. Yeah, Once you're in beauty, it. you don't ever get out if you love are it. a people we person. Love people. We yeah. love people. And, yeah. you know, this industry is such a beautiful industry, and we do so many good things for society. I mean, we're there when you get your first haircut. They're there when you graduate kindergarten, when you graduate high school, when you get married, when you get engaged, for every selfie you take. I mean, we're so ingrained and involved in people's lives and we really matter and we make a difference. I could take a person, like I used to do hair for, I'll tell you, you know, many, many years and I've had many, many clients and I would have older ladies that would come in, you know, that, you know, and they say, you know, society's hard on older people, you know that, especially a woman and their beauty has gone and whatever. But, you know, when you could sit there and take whatever they have and color that gray hair and make them feel 20 years younger and spice up their style and work with what they have, they've changed, but you work with it and they walk out of there feeling like a million bucks. You've it done- It changes you. I mean, that's the yes. purpose. That's why we do what we do. I think there's nothing better for me that I always in my blowout turn the person away from the mirror because I like that reveal, reveal, you know, from the color of like turning them back around. And it's all about me. Honestly, it's the fulfillment part of my job. And um, to be able to see that smile that comes about once they see the color and everything revealed and, and they just feel refreshed. You know, sometimes you just get tired of looking at the same thing in the mirror and they just feel refreshed. So I know a lot of people come to the hair salon for mental health as well. Um, and it is essential. It is necessary. I also want to point out just the necessity of a sanitary environment. We are using sharp instruments by your face. We have tweezers and scissors and, and all of these type of things. So any type of outdoor environment is not really conducive to any type of sanitary procedure that hairdressers are trained to do. So I do hope that we get this resolved for our California uh, clients and our California sisters and brothers doing hair, right? We got to all come together here. So I look forward to seeing this part of your documentary. I looked at a little bit of your clips on your Instagram last night. Thank you. I appreciate that. You know, when I initially started Hairdresser Power, the concept of Hairdresser Power, uh, almost, I don't know, going on near 20 years ago, um, it was to unite us. Mm -hmm. It was to get uh, get us the power to get us insurance because we don't have insurance, um, to get financial planning together, mm -hmm. to have a voice as far as, you know, for lobbyists and things like that politically, because if we would get together, we have a lot of influence in society. Yeah. But, you know, hairdressers are kind of like cats, you know, it's like they... It's not like herding cows. It's like herding cats. They run all over and do this and do that. And they're all individuals and they want to fight each other and because we're creative. And you know what I'm saying? But I think it is a competitive maybe, environment. But I think we are, especially through all of this, turning much more into a collaborative uh, community. Well, that's what I was going to say. I think maybe because of what's happened, that maybe we finally are going to realize the power we do have. Yeah. And uh, if we combine and we get together and we stop fighting each other because there's more heads than we can do. You know that, right? There are more. <laughs> there's enough either. hair for all of us. There's enough hair for all of us. And you know, the thing is, I don't want the clients to waste 
money. And the way that you don't waste money is you get great products. Yeah. You put these products and you recommend these products. You're a doctor for hair, okay? You need to educate yourself. And not with just what the marketing and the story, like the things that we teach in our company. And we want to make better hairdressers because then you add value to who you are as a hairdresser and the products support it and the clients are happy and they never leave you. Absolutely. And there's nothing to be said that literally uh, you can learn to do you know, touch up your roots at home. You can learn to do your own manicure, paint your own nails, but is it the same experience? Is it what you're looking for out of the whole experience? And I think that's really where we go to is just as people, I think we go to the salon for the interaction as well as the professionalism that comes up. It is a different experience. So Absolutely. you can't even compare well, it's the also two really. The, the camaraderie, it's the release. Yes. It's the fact that, you know, even just getting a great scalp massage, do you realize what that does to your scalp muscles and the tension that it releases? All the nerve endings in your scalp. Absolutely. I mean, it's just, and the, I mean, for even our pedicure uh, friends, you know, it's the foot massage that really makes the pedicure, right? This guy, right? <laughs> yeah, I who, love Who cares? So you can paint the best flower on my toenail, but if you can't rub my feet, I don't know that I'm coming back. <laughs> yeah. And I literally go to um, like a massage, like, like if, if, for example, the local massage, and I really focus on the foot. Yeah. And there's when they put that tension and pressure, I, I literally could fall asleep. It's so relaxing. I know it's not for everybody because some people have very sensitive feet. Yeah. But if you can have those nerve endings of your feet pressed and worked, wow, so yeah. good for your feet. So Absolutely. just let's wrap it up. I want to tell sure. hairdressers, we do have a lot of hairdressers that watch us as well. How can you get involved in the Hairdresser Power Challenge? Is there a way oh, for okay. hairdressers to apply? Yeah, we want you to. We want you to subscribe. We want you to apply. So go to H, as in, you know, letter H, D, as in dog, P, as in Patrick, challenge. Hairdresser Power. Yeah, hdpchallenge.com. Good. And get started. Yeah, you can sign up. You can see what we're doing. You can look at videos. You can watch the show. And if you subscribe, every time there's a new show, we'll send it to you. Because a lot of people don't have cable. We're on CNBC. Um, but like I say, if you're walking through the airport at 11 o'clock in California, you'll see my face there. So you go, oh, that guy. I know that guy. Yeah. Well, we'd love you to watch the show. It's really fun. It's educational. It puts hairdressers in a great light. And we'd like you to be part of what we teach and what we believe in. And, you know, the best thing is that um, we're creating value, we're creating relationships, and we're spreading love because, honestly, hairdressers are all about love. I really believe that. And Absolutely. we're all about caring. I mean, right? Look, you guys, we have Patrick Dockery on our show, the host of Hairdresser Power Challenge. Um, Allison's put the, the website that, to find out more Thanks. information in our comments below. We so appreciate your time, your love, your compassion, your knowledge. Thank you so much, Patrick, for being here. Thank I know you. you say you're not a busy man because you're very well organized, but you seem like an extremely busy man, and I appreciate your time. All right. Well, thank you so much. I love what you're doing. Thank I you. love to share with people, and I think your show is wonderful. And thank you so much for having me on. And um, hopefully, when you get down in my neck of the woods, you can bring your cameras, and we'll show you how products are made, right? All right. Yeah, let's do Love a little everybody. interview of the Thank lab. You. Just, hey, Great. just remember to enjoy. Enjoy. Thank you so much. Enjoy your weekend and have a great time. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you. All right. Well, that was so fascinating. He is such an interesting person. Um, be sure to check out the Hairdresser Power Challenge for all of us hairdresser geeks out there. Um, you also see a lot of really cool styles. So I'm one that loves those competition shows. So something new for me, too, to check out. Uh, we appreciate you guys being here. Remember, we have all licensed cosmetologists answering our phones at the numbers below, and they all sit through these PK classes with me because I'm an education nerd and love to learn. That's why we do what we do here at Beauty Care Choices. So we appreciate you all being with us. If you have any suggestions of future shows, feel free to put them in comments. And as always, thank you, Allison, for being on comments. Thank you, Tobin, for being on graphics and helping produce this show. I appreciate you both so much. And bye for now. Have a great weekend.